Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. In this video, I'm going to talk to Frisner Jean-Pierre, PE, a general engineer at the United States Department of the Air Force. JP has nine years of experience in energy modeling, commissioning, ME PFP design, and project management. And in this video, he's going to share how he prepared for the PE exam. And it was a kind of during COVID, he decided to take it and he nailed it. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. JP, welcome to Pass the PE Exam. We're excited to have you here today. Before we dive into your PE exam prep process and study tips and recommendations, could you just tell our listeners what kind of engineering you do on a daily basis today? I'm a general engineer for the United States Air Force. I currently work at Tyndall Air Force Base. Um, what we do is uh, we help our current customers on base if they need a new building to be built or a building to be repaired, we walk them through the process and then we get all the information and then we help them with the construction all the way to completion. And that's what we do on a daily basis. That's awesome. So, all right, let's jump into this PE exam process. Now, a few years ago, you decided to take the FE exam, you passed it, you got your EIT. You took the PE exam a couple of years ago, 2018, 2019, you didn't pass the exam. And then you know Correct. you had rescheduled for 2019, and then that got I guess postponed, and then you had to take it again, which of course you passed. So congratulations on that. But let's let's dive into this a little bit now. First of all, which PE exam did you take? I took the architectural PE exam first, and did not pass that. And then I took the HVAC since that was the architectural PE exam ended up getting canceled in May, uh, April 2020. So uh, right after that, uh, the HVAC, mechanical HVAC P exam actually became online exam too, where they switched to, oh, sorry, they switched it to a computer-based exam in 2020. So I ended up taking that in May, 2020. So did, you, ch that. So did you change from architectural to the HVAC for strategy purposes or simply because it was more readily available to take? Uh, because it was more read readily available to take. Okay. And you felt like that was your next strongest right. area. Okay. All right. So talk about the process now. How many hours did you study? How many months did you allot yourself for the PE exam prep? Well, I allowed, I, I allowed myself nine months and I wanted to dedicate nine hours a week uh, because my work schedule is pretty heavy. And um, around October, November of 2019, uh, things got iffy of where they were not sure. They started sending out N NCES that are sending out letters saying, we're not sure if we're going to be able to have um, the exam in uh, April 2020. Um, about February, they announced the cancellation of the exams for April 2020. Um, so from February on about to May, I studied for the mechanical. I switched there with my whole switching uh, subjects to strictly mechanical HVAC. Okay. So you did, you did about an hour a day after work each day, and then you had a couple right. hours on the weekend. So you had roughly nine hours a week for nine months. I mean, that's a good amount of study time. Was this all self-study or did you take any courses? Um, I took one review course for uh, architectural engineering. And then once I found that that test was canceled, then I switched to, I saw that PPI was actually doing a promotion about offering a free review course for uh, three winners that submitted a uh, article on um, why it's important to get the PE. So I submitted that article and then ended up winning that free course from PPI. 
So in February, I won that option. And then I joined that class in February and I studied for that class, used that class. And then once that class was over, I took the month of May to really just work as many problems as I can through their uh, online um, question base. That's awesome. Or database. And how, how did that work out for you? Uh, Help me to pass. Yeah, like That's I was, cool. I was by, by, the, by the time I started, I was shooting around about 50%. But when I got closer towards the t- testing, I was about 70, 65, 70 jump in area. So That's awesome. And so it sounds like that what was helpful for you was just doing a lot of problems. Would you agree with that? Right, right. Understanding, you know, how they will come at me or and how to break them down and see and see through the jargon. Because sometimes you're on the exam, you get a lot of jargon. And when it's a simple, how do you solve the airflow of this stuff? That's awesome. So in terms of approaching the different categories of the exam, did you take like one category at a time and then break it down and understand it and go through it? How did you approach the actual exam the way it was broken down in your study and how that tie to it? Um, for the architectural PE exam, I did that because it was broken into five different sections. And I took on the hardest section first, which was structural for me. And then I worked with my way through the other sections as if, depending on how comfortable I felt with them. Uh, for the HVAC exam, I, I went through it all completely um, and within sections because I felt, I felt confident, well-rounded with, with all my HVAC knowledge. I just wanted to make sure like I went through all of it equally and then I could pinpoint the small areas where I could see, okay, so I got the same question wrong or I got the same category of questions wrong. Then I could focus on that like with it leading up to that month of the exam. Got it. So the first time around when you took the architectural, there was five categories. You attacked kind of your weaker ones first and you worked from there. And then the second time around, you took the HVAC exam mostly because it was more convenient. They switched it to computer-based. However, for that one, you felt pretty well-rounded. So you just went through everything, you know, kind of at once and then, you know, kind of felt it out and saw where you needed to work more. Right. Okay. That's great. And it sounds like the review course was helpful in that it gave you a lot of problems and you were able to see how at one point you were at a certain rate of percentage passing, and then you continued to up that with more and more practice. Right, right. More understanding because there's some some subjects I forgot over the period of time. Uh, for example, um, he transferred through a wall and just like the formulas, I was like, oh, I know that formula. And then just from keep on practicing, I remember the pages that were they were on and it just helped me to flow better throughout the exam. So the architectural engineering one was um, paper, like the original format, and then the yes. HVAC was computer-based, right? So you've taken one of both. Correct. What can you offer to people out there listening? Like, what was the big differences between the, the two for you? Um, I found the architectural, the way they uh, formatted the exam was actually uh, very well done. Um, I could I could actually, I did subject by subject for about the first, for every half had a subject. Uh, sorry, every half had all five subjects, but they did one subject for their, for every hour, you know what I mean? Right. Like it, it wasn't just all the subjects together. You did 10 questions for one subject and then that was it. And then you moved to the next subject, did 10 questions. And I found that was very um, uh, well put together, but I, th- I thought it was daunting because I had over 30 books to go through for, for that. While the computer-based, all I had to do was remember where, um, the subject is and the reference that's on the computer and just type in the page number. Oh yeah, there it is. And then I could go back to the test and keep moving. You know, that's a really interesting point because one would think that if you had unlimited resources, it would kind of be easier. But I also could see the flip side of that. Whereas if you just have one, you know, reference book online that you have to use the whole time, you're going to get really familiar with that book. You're going to know where everything is. You're going to be able to search it during the exam. It's just less things to look through and it takes less time. Right. Right. Um, I, and it's, it's, you're more comfortable because you're, you already have like a set page in your head saying, oh, it should be around page 50 or page 170. And that know? was just because you did right. so much repetition studying with it, right? Right, right. 
Right, and NCES provides you the reference manual for the test before you even take it. Yeah, that's so. great. That's great. That's good to hear because I know some people out there were a little nervous about the computer-based version, just feeling like you know, you're know you kind of locked into the computer. You don't have a lot of flexibility, but I do see that there can be a lot of benefits to it in terms of, you know, like you said, the one reference manual, you can search through it. And then even getting your passing rate, everything happens quicker You know, when it's computer-based, which also is a positive um, so I think that that's, that's a big positive. So, so kind of looking back on the experience, JP, just overall for our viewers out there that are preparing for the PE or they're thinking about taking it, what advice could you offer them just looking back on the whole process for you that you would, you know, any like final recommendations you would make to them? Uh, I would take a review course. Um, I find that the review course gives you more than you need but they also give you like specific details that you may have missed if you were to study on your own. That's where I would, I, I feel like sometimes I come up short is because I'll just do the book, but they'll actually explain why or the process behind the formula and how to um, attack a problem. And that's where I think gave me the advantage for the exam. That's a great point. And one of the other, I think, underrated benefits of taking a review course that people don't think about is it just also keeps you on schedule to study because sometimes you're so busy right. with work if you just got a book on your desk and you say i'm going to study an hour every night and you know something comes up you maybe you're married with kids maybe you have other things going on you know you're not forced to get into that book but when you you know purchase a review course and you have those materials and maybe there's live sessions depending on what review course you take that's something that kind of keeps you focused and keeps you on schedule to make sure you cover all the materials before you get to the exam. So, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of benefits to taking a course, you know, it keeps you on pace and, and really helps you. And I'm glad that you found it helpful. And again, we're talking to prisoner, John Pierre, he just took some time out of his day. And JP, I just want to thank you for coming on and, and joining us and just sharing some of your tips and your experience with us. No problem, Anthony. I thank you for inviting me. I appreciate everything. Uh, you've done and your coaching. And uh, you know, if you ever have any other uh, questions, just reach out. Great. Thanks, JP. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly. So please be sure to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. We want to help you get that PE license as soon as possible. And please ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will respond to you. Let me know if there's a specific topic that you'd like me to cover or maybe there's a problem that you're stuck on and we can solve it for you. Pass the PE exam will have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.